Welcome back. In this video, I take you through step one, which is the identification process. How do you identify the appropriate ARIMA model? But before you watch this video, please watch this requisite video, the basics of ARIMA and ARIMA modeling. It gives you the foundational knowledge that you require. I'll be taking a question approach in this tutorial. So the question I'll be asking you is that, how can the appropriate model be identified? I'll be using a quarterly data set on GDP on the United States. The data set is from Gujarati and Porter exercise 21.1. The link to that data set is in the video description. Click on it. It will take you to my Google Drive from where you can download the data. The tools that you require for identification process are the Corellogram, the ACF, and the PACF. And you must have heard that the process of identification is more of art than of science. Two people can look at the same data and they can come up with different ARIMA models. So there may not be an exact perfect ARIMA model. Like I said before, to identify the appropriate lags for the AR and MA process, you will require the correlogram, the autocorrelation function, and the partial autocorrelation function. The correlogram is simply the plot of the ACF and the PACF against the lag length of the series. So what is the PACF? The PACF simply measures the correlation between time series observations that are K time periods apart after you have controlled for the correlations at intermediate lags. In other words, the PACF is just the correlation between YT and YT minus K after removing the effect of intermediate Ys. Basically, you are measuring the marginal impact. So that is uh, what PACF is all about. This table is very handy if you need to understand ARIMA modeling. You need to know the pattern of the ACF and the pattern of the PACF before you can decide whether this series is going to follow an AR process completely or is going to be just basically an MA process or a combination of AR and MA. How can you know whether it's going to be an AR process? You will see that the ACF pattern will show an exponential decay, or what they call a damped sine wave. When we take a particular example, you see exactly what I mean. And the PACF pattern will show significant spikes from the first lag. So that will indicate to you that this series will follow an AR process. How about MA process? You will observe that the ACF pattern we indicate significant spike from the first lag, while the PACF pattern will indicate exponential decay. And for you to know whether it's going to follow an aroma process, both ACF and PACF will have the same pattern. That is the way I easily identify my aroma models. So just observe the ACF pattern and the PACF pattern. If they are the same, then you are going to have an aroma model. And from the table, you can easily observe that the AR and MA, they move in different directions, opposite directions. And the ACF pattern for a strictly AR process is showing exponential decay. The PACF pattern is showing significant spikes. If the MAQ process is indicating significant spikes for the ACF pattern, then the PACF pattern will show exponential decay. So you can see that um, they are in opposite directions. But if both of them indicate the same pattern, then you have an ARMA model. So try to understand this table. Once you are familiar with it, whenever you plot your correlogram, you can easily identify whether it's going to be strictly AR or strictly MA or a combination of both. It's an art, not a science. So you need to master the skills. So how do you engage the identification procedure? I have listed five simple steps that will guide you. The first thing you need to do is to plot the series to visualize if it is stationary or not. The second thing you need to do is also plot the correlogram, calculate the ACF and PACF of the raw data, check whether the series is stationary or not. If the series is stationary, go to step 4. If not, go to step 3. And what is step 4? If the series is stationary, simply determine the model to estimate. So step 4 takes you to step 5. But if the series is not stationary, go to step 3, whereby you take the first difference of the raw data and again, 
plot the correlogram and calculate the PACF and the ACF. After which you determine the model, then go ahead to estimate the model. So here in Eviews, I'm using GDP data, a quarterly data from Gujarati and Quarter from 1970 quarter one to 1991 quarter four. So double click on this, step one says plot the series. So I go to view, click on graph, line and symbol. You can see here graph data, raw data, I click OK. So from what we can see, trending upwards is not reverting to its mean. So visualizing it indicates this is a non-stationary series. To be sure that this series is non-stationary, let's plot the correlogram. Go to view, correlogram. This is the level. I click OK. I'm using 24 lags because I have quarterly data. So I can use up to 24 lags. I click OK. So here is a plot of the correlogram. I said it before that to fit an Arima model to data, the basic tool is the correlogram. And from what we can see, the graph shows some significant autocorrelation that are outside the standard error bounds. The broken lines here you can see the standard error bounds and the autocorrelation declines very slowly to zero from lag 1 up to lag 22 the lags are very significant and the decline is very gradual to zero while the PAC you can see the first lag is very significant while every other one cuts off so this series is indicative of a non-stationary series the decline is very gradual so for we to stationarize it let's go back to view correlogram now we click on first difference we click ok so now we can see there's a big difference from what we had before we can see that the autocorrelation the first lag is significant it's outside the standard error bounds while from the second lag there's an exponential decay cuts off completely to zero the eighth lag is significant and from then again we can see that the twelfth lag is also significant let's look at the PAC very identical to the ACF the first lag is significant and there is also an exponential decay lag 2 is zero lag 8 is significant and lag 12 is significant so I told you before that a very easy way to identify them is that um, observe their pattern if the pattern of the AC and the PAC are the same you are having an ARMA model. So this is the GDP data, the raw form that I showed you from eViews. And when the first difference was taken, this is how the plot looks like. And the correlogram I just showed you, this is it, indicating a gradual decline. The ACF declines very slowly up to about 23 lags. You can see here, indicative of a non-stationary series since they are outside the 95% confidence interval. So you can either call this 95% confidence interval or standard error bounds. You are correct. And like I said earlier, also the PACF drops immediately after the first lap. So this series here is non-stationary. So let's look at the different series I just showed you. The ACF shows good exponential decay and a damped sine wave pattern. Lags 1, 8 and 12 are statistically significant. Same thing for the PACF. So this is an ARIMA process because ACF and PACF have the same pattern. So the question is, how do we find the ARIMA pattern for the different GDP series? Is it ARIMA 111 or 112? How do you determine it? The simplest way I can explain this is that you need to capture the significant lags. For instance, the first lag of the AC is significant, likewise the PAC. The eighth lag of the AC is significant, likewise the PAC. The twelfth lag is significant for both AC and PAC. So you, are, you can have different combinations of this lag formation arma 118 arma 1811 as the case may be so again the statistical significance of the lags will inform your decision on the combination of the arima model but remember parsimony is a keyword box and jenkins they uh, emphasized parsimonious models that is parsimonious models often give better prediction they give better forecast than over parameterized model so pick that model that will give you the smallest parameters to be estimated so from the example i gave before the tentative models that we can deduce from this um correlogram will be an arima 111 that is using just one lag of ar and one lag of ma or an arima 118 using one lag of ar and eight lags of ma and on and on as you can see on the screen so what do we have to do out of these tentative models? I call them tentative because we don't know which model is still appropriate as at this point. We are only trying to identify an ARIMA model from the series, trying to fit the best ARIMA model to data. So from then on, we have extracted four tentative models. You will observe that I did not include the 12th lag. 
I'm just trying to see how parsimonious a model I can create from this. So I'm leaving the 12th lag out of this combination. So in essence, we'll be estimating four tentative models from where we now pick what the models that will best fit the series. In my next video, I will now take you through estimating the four tentative models that we have identified. I will encourage you to read more about Arima modeling using these references, Asteri and Hall, Gujarati and Porter, Woodridge, and also several journal articles. Thank you for watching. Please don't go away. Stay with me. The next video will be on estimating an Arima model.